That video was taken about an hour ago right here, southeast of Dallas, and we've got our moderate risk out for today. Numerous tornado watches out from Texas all the way up towards Illinois. Also this afternoon, an MCS bearing down on Memphis all the way up to Paducah. A couple of tornado warnings. The velocity product does show a fairly linear boundary, but a couple of breaks along that line. Possible QLCS tornadoes responsible for these warnings. Yesterday was a busy day in northwestern Iowa. Around the 6 o'clock hour, a tornadic storm moved through Gilmer City produced at least four tornadoes. And there's the animation on that cell moving northeast right through Gilmer City and another storm on its tail. There's a look at the velocity imagery showing a number of distinct TVS signatures as the storm moved across Gilmore City. And one of those couplets had up to 100 knots of differential velocity. And things quite busy down in Texas in the Temple, Waco area. Waco located right here in Temple, right there. The main cell of interest early on, this is during the 5 o'clock hour, south of Gatesville. The first tornado reported with that storm, and we'll run that forward and you can check that out. Already had a tornado warning on that. And as that moved northeast, it began weakening, but further to the south you can see a separate cell way down south of Temple, right here. That approached the town of Salado. Let's take a closer look at that. There you go, that's the street level data. There's Salado, there's I-35, and the storm out to the west. And as that developed, again, we're running the entirety of the five o'clock hour, developed a hook there, and for a while, it looked like Salado was in real trouble. Jarrell, right down to the south, and they had trouble over 20 years ago. But fortunately, the storm weakened, and the tornado moved off to the northwest. I can show you that a little bit better using the velocity. Let me bring up the storm mode of velocity. Yeah, let's try a little bit of this two-panel action up at the top right. You can see the time in UTC. There's the mezzo corresponding to that location right there. That's going to be where the updraft is. And running that forward, you can see that strengthening. And I'll probably have to pull away these warnings and watches so you can see that a little bit better. But there it is. Distinct TVS. If I put a mark, that'll carry over to the reflectivity. And there's a little debris ball. And we can especially see that on the spectrum width right there. Now if I run that forward, you can pretty much follow that path all the way towards Salado. That tornadic debris signature was quite prominent on spectrum width and running that forward. You can kind of see how it gets carried up to the northeast and then it finally arcs around to the north. See that right there? You would almost miss that Not so much on the velocity, distinct TVS signature right there, and that gets carried into the back of the storm. And at the end of the five o'clock hour, it's right back here. And of course, with the cyclic development, there's a new updraft coming together east of Salado. And then during the six o'clock hour, the storm started moving east of I-35. It was going through some reorganization large downdrafts from further south that interferes somewhat with the updraft and so the storm went through a couple cycles here and now you can see it reorganizing to the south and then during the seven o'clock hour initially it looks a little bit outflowish those greens indicating outflow coming towards the radar but it did manage to come together you can see right here East of Temple, a new circulation coming together. That's going to be right there. And notice in the weaker reflectivity field, there is a outflow boundary right there. And that seems to pull right into the storm, indicating inflow reaching this area. And sure enough, it did produce a tornado 
Yeah, that's about roughly when it was taking place, around 720, and then it moved eastward and kind of gusted out. But on the spectrum width, we really don't see that boundary very well due to degradation of the radar data. There's the evolution of that storm from 7.30 to 8 p.m. You can see that outflow boundary surging out ahead of it. And then during the 8 p.m. hour, it continued its supercellular characteristics as it moved towards Hearn and Franklin, and there was another strong storm just to its west. Returning back to today, here's the early afternoon map. Cold air mass coming into the central plains all the way down to Texarkana, Austin, Texas, and further up to the north, we've got pretty much near blizzard conditions in parts of North Dakota, Manitoba, and Saskatchewan. Strong northerly flow coming in the backside. Let's take a look and see if we do have blizzard watches or warnings in effect. And yes, we do. The western two-thirds of North Dakota, all the way back to Montana, North western South Dakota, and then further down to the south, just a wind advisory for the Midwest, and that translates off into a red flag warning all the way down into Texas. Freeze and frost advisories for Kansas and Missouri, we had that happen just last week, and of course the severe warnings out there in the southeastern U.S. So returning to that map again, you can see how much of that warm air has come into New York and Ontario. We've got 70s in Buffalo, 72 at Albany, and dew points there in the 50s. So we are transporting quite a bit of moisture back into that occlusion in Minnesota and the Dakotas. And much of that cold air being supported by this large high 1040 millibars over the Northwest Territories, that continental polar air feeding directly to the south. Let's take a look out in the Pacific and see what's going on. High pressure off the coast of California, but further up to the north. There's a frontal wave there west of Arcata, and then further to the north, some rather nice conditions in the Gulf of Alaska but further up to the north. Still some Arctic air up there on the ice pack, temperatures below zero up around Barrow and Dead Horse. But the warm sector feeding up there towards Nome where it's 36 at this hour. And a well-developed frontal system there in Canada. Some very cold air around that. Definitely sub-zero conditions. We've got minus 16 at Mold Bay. And that contrasts quite a bit with warmer conditions just below freezing in the Northwest Territories. And then taking a look out in the Atlantic, not very much going on. Typical frontal system out there south of Greenland. It's already occluded, but there's this potent little system here southeast of Newfoundland. Some rather heavy precipitation fields wrapping around that. And checking back in on our MCS. A little bit of time has passed. This video does take a while to produce. We've already got a couple tornado warnings, one south of Paducah, the other in northern Memphis. And these two look like QLCS tornadoes. The velocity really not showing much going on. We're a little bit too far away to pick up the other one in Kentucky. But we can run this back and see what they were responding to. Don't have any frames before that, but apparently something was going on on the north side of Memphis. So I think things are looking okay right now, at least for the time being. But definitely check your local watches and warnings, because this video is certainly not current. So why don't we look ahead and see what we're in for, looking at the GFS here. We're going to just quickly plot the fronts. We can look at the thickness field and the troughing to get an idea where that's going to be. And that gives us our fronts about like that. And the remainder up into Minnesota, that's going to be an occlusion. And then the other front out on the west coast, that appears to be approaching Fort Bragg, Arcata, and Eureka. If we run that forward, you can see the MCS pushing east into much of Kentucky and Tennessee during the early evening and another segment into Alabama 
and this is showing a bit of Boeing. Now the GFS is not a convective allowing model, so I would not put too much stock into that, but you can check the high resolution rapid refresh and some of the other convective allowing models to kind of sniff out what's happening with those cells. It looks like a window of severe weather into about two or three in the morning, things start shutting down. By tomorrow morning, the front is pushing into Pennsylvania, the Appalachians, and down into Florida. The warm front lifting north into New England and the occluded front going all the way up into Ontario. We should use purple for that. And an extensive wraparound going all the way back to Winnipeg and Grand Forks picking up some significant snow today into tonight, possibly up to a foot in some areas. Well, you can check it out right there. There's the basic snowfall down at the bottom. That's going to be inches. So getting into those purples, that's the 6 to 12 inch range. So it looks like certainly a bad day to be on the Trans-Canada Highway. And then for tomorrow, some thunderstorms redeveloping up there in New York and moving into New England. Most of the cold air will be spreading into the northeastern U.S. You can see return flow already picking up in Texas. So that'll kick that cold air northward back into Nebraska. And we'll start pulling the moisture back northward once again. Looks like kind of a stationary frontal boundary through this region right here. The Red River region into Lubbock and Colorado and Utah. Supported by this 1035 millibar high but it does not look like it's coming very far south due to troughing on the west coast. This next system comes together. This is on Sunday. That looks to also be bringing quite a bit of snow to North Dakota. Another powerful spring storm system as that moves into the Great Lakes. More cold air coming back into the central U.S. with that 1027 millibar ridge for Monday and Tuesday. And then we're building up moisture once again on the Great Plains, thunderstorms, and troughing up in the north central U.S., giving us a window of severe weather in the Midwest. And let's check out those temperature records. For this afternoon, we're expecting 92 at Victoria, tying the record, and 103 beating the record by 4 degrees. So the hot weather not limited to those stations. The cold front is continuing to come south, but still some very warm conditions downslope in combination with some rather dry terrain. 100 degrees just south of San Antonio, 98 at Hondo, and 103 there at Catula. I can also make out 105 just south of Laredo. For tomorrow, record lows all across the northwestern U.S., especially around Missoula and Helena, Montana. And in the northeastern U.S., some warm conditions coming up into the mid-70s in Massachusetts. For Friday, continued cold. 9 degrees at Great Falls, 25 at Spokane, and 9 at Sheridan. Meanwhile, in Florida, coming up to 88 at Tampa. For Saturday, bitter cold conditions in the Dakotas, 8 degrees at Bismarck. Meanwhile, well to the south in San Antonio, 94 approaching the record. And continuing that sharp contrast for Sunday, 11 degrees at Grand Forks and International Falls, 22 at Green Bay, versus 88 at Tampa and 90 at Victoria, Texas. Let's check in on Big Rig Steve. He's always got great views of the sky. He is leaving Illinois and heading for Columbus. He is on 355, just southwest of Chicago. And he is in the soup, heading southbound in rain. So he's on the northern periphery of that stuff. That's moving through the Mississippi River Valley. So there it is, his location about right here. He's in these little convective bands, about to get into this trailing stratiform region. A severe thunderstorm watches out for his area, but that's about to expire in five minutes. It appears that's mostly for this stuff that is moving out of the region. So I think he's looking okay. 
There's one last look at things from his perspective. You can actually make out the cloud forms. So the rain is probably not going to be too bad. And before we wrap up, we'll take a look at the visible imagery and check out that weather system. And I've added the GOES Lightning Mapper. That's a very neat product. We, we've we never really had good lightning data. A lot of that's been locked up with private vendors and not very well distributed. But now we get it from the GOES satellite. So this is showing us all the lightning strikes all the way down towards Lufkin and as far north as Cairo and Paducah. And we can see further north around Chicago, just up to the north, very sparse lightning strikes. And where Big Rig Steve is, not really much going on at all. And there's a look at the blizzard from 22,000 miles in space. You can see the deformation zone and the wraparound going into western North Dakota. That's where they're getting that heavy snow and blowing snow and blizzard conditions. Elsewhere around the country, we'll take a quick check. Pretty quiet in the southwestern U.S. As we go further north, we pick up the mountain wave activity. Quite a substantial amount of mountain wave activity, all the way from Redding, Red Bluff, all the way to Elko. A few snow showers have been reported there and what looks like cumuliform clouds maybe some embedded CBs all the way into the Wasatch Mountains. And that's a closer look at that part of the image. And off the California coast, we can see that weather system. That's on that surface chart that we saw earlier. The infrared imagery does pick out that structure a little bit better, and it shows somewhat of a bear clinic leaf appearance. Got that substance on the back side and the ascent right there. There's a look at the storms on infrared imagery. The black is indicating the overshooting tops. That's them right there poking up into higher levels. Get that adiabatic cooling as the parcels rise into that overshoot, and you get that dramatic cooling. And more of that from Monroe down towards Lufkin and a lot of those overshooting tops shown up west of Memphis. And there's a look at things further up the line, not too dramatic north of Paducah or Louisville, but they are getting extensive showers and rain. So once again, moderate risk from Paducah down towards Jackson, Mississippi. For tomorrow, slight risk for the lower Hudson Valley region. Connecticut, Massachusetts, and far eastern Pennsylvania. Then for Friday, marginal risk across Arkansas and east Oklahoma. And no clear guidance beyond that. Predictability too low. But I don't really think we're looking at much until later next week. And one last check of things before we start rendering the video. So far today, no tornadoes, but some wind reports across much of Arkansas. And the tornado warnings continue to come out. These are going to be east, southeast of Paducah. Looks like near the town of Cadiz. Those are going to be for QLCS tornadoes along the leading edge of this MCS. And wherever those cells can strengthen and, and locally dominate that part of the line, those will have potential to produce rotation. So continue to monitor that throughout the evening if you're in Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, or Alabama. And at least for a while, possibly parts of Arkansas and Louisiana. Also a pretty strong line moving through central Louisiana at this time. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Let me go ahead and get this rendered and uploaded for you. We'll close with a little bit of footage looking at the back of that line in East Texas. That's what you saw earlier on the opening from the other side. Hope you all have a great Wednesday evening. Take care, and we'll see you on Friday. Bye-bye.